It's a cold New Orleans night in January of 2022 while I'm making this video. New Orleans is a city that's basically below sea level and surrounded by water everywhere you look. So when it gets cold here, it's cold to the bone. The buildings are not designed to keep you warm, they're designed to keep you cool. Luckily, I have a nice pair of slippers helping to keep me from shivering at my desk. I'm going on two years with these sweet, perfectly fitted navy blue slippers that I was gifted by my dear friend Elena when I visited her family in North Macedonia in January 2022. Elena's family lives up in the mountains, just outside of a southwestern city. At the time I was there, they were snow-covered mountains. Their home was sturdy and big, made up of lots of well-sealed rooms so that they could heat their house with a combination of thin, wall-mounted radiators and a small wood-burning stove in the kitchen. Upon entering their home, it was customary to remove your shoes by the entrance stairs and immediately put your cozy slippers on. That was the last time I was able to leave the United States. Originally, my trip to North Macedonia was meant to be a fun stopover on my way to live in Australia for a year on a working holiday visa. However, two years ago at this time, Australia was having a wildfire season so dangerous and frightening, it really felt like the world was ending. It was on the front page of every paper, and so many people I knew were asking me if I was still going to go. I decided to change my direction at the last minute and move to New Orleans. But I was still determined to visit Elena and her family in North Macedonia. The first morning I woke up in Elena's home, it was so peaceful. It was quiet and the views were gray and calm as the fog had rolled in and frozen snow onto the trees. We started the day with a three mile walk up to a remote mountain village. Mostly abandoned, all that were left were a handful of elderly people, probably less than eight, Elena said. I wondered what it was like to live in such a small community up in the mountains for so long. I can imagine it's very different from New York City, where I had boarded my first airplane for this trip, that's for sure. On our walk, we overheard a woman talking across the one-lane dirt road to her neighbor who was tidying her back porch while she swept her front stoop. According to Elena, they were discussing drying their laundry on the radiators because of the freezing fog. Laundry seems to be a universal conversation, and we always find our way to discussing it no matter what type of clothing it is or how it's dried. So far, I already felt connected to these people whose language and culture I did not know. There's a holiday in Macedonia where big crowds gather to watch a priest throw a blessed cross into a very cold lake and a whole bunch of people jump in to see who can catch it. Sort of like when you play seal the bacon in the pool, but instead of a bunch of kids fighting over a waterproof Nerf toy, the water has been blessed and whoever finds the cross is extra blessed. On this holiday, Elena woke me up bright and early. There are no memories from sleeping, she reminded me, and I hurried downstairs to eat a traditional breakfast for this day. It was a gelatin made from boiled pig's feet. It was kind of like a clear meat flavored jello. We bundled up and drove an hour or so to a town on a beautiful lake, a place apparently much more pleasant for swimming in the summer. We pushed our way through the crowds and I started to feel nervous that someone might start shooting a gun. I've never been a part of a mass shooting, but I will say that the news in the US can be quite traumatizing sometimes. Today, one might have a panic attack for being so packed in a crowd like that for very different reasons. Only, at this time, the pandemic didn't quite have a name yet. It was just beginning, and we weren't quite aware of it. After the cross had been thrown and the water blessed, people began going down to the edge of the water to wash their faces and rinse away their sins. We began to wander along a wooden boardwalk through the water alongside a mountain. There were no safety rails, something I so often notice when traveling outside the US. We climbed the trails up to an overlook where there lived a very small church. It could probably only fit about 15 people in it. I was in awe at the peace and beauty until we opened the door to look inside and we were bombarded with chaos. Inside the dark gray interior was crowded with people, surrounding a screaming baby 
being held up in the air like Simba, and I almost expected the circle of life to be playing in the background behind all that noise. This baby was much less enthusiastic about being bathed in freezing blessed water in the depths of January. Later on in the week, we went hunting. Well, it was mostly us hiking and Elena's dad trying for a rabbit with their tender, eager, and strong hunting dog, Santo. The hike was beautiful and included a stop for snacks, homemade time tea, and shooting practice. For the first time in my life, I held a gun and got to set it off. My target was an eight by 11 inch sign stapled to the tree. I stood about 40 feet from the tree on the hill and missed the target by about an inch. On the way down, we saw a neighbor taking his sheep out for their daily walk through the mountains. He had a horse and a dog to help. The way that the sun shone behind the animals as it came over the mountain was magical. At the end of our hike, upon returning to town, we went to visit a family member's house and their new litter of hunting puppies that they had bred in their backyard. They were precious and only about 12 days old. They were so cute. All in all, I am so thankful for my opportunity to visit Macedonia and to have Elena's family host me. Getting to experience life with a Macedonian family was full of kindness, delicious meals, beautiful scenery, and a warm home. Fala Minogu. Thank you very much. Aida. Ciao.